Hello everybody, welcome back to NACA's Fall 2020 Virtual Programming and Indigenous Cooking Class. My name is Andrea Mayawel Garza and I'm the owner of Mayawel's Catering, which is an Indigenous Foods Catering Company. This is our third class and the theme for today is our food stories, you are what you eat. Today we'll be making a roasted butternut squash and Swiss chard served with wild rice and veggies. Can you guess which one of these is our butternut squash? Here's just a little quick guide of some squash. The squashes we now find in markets are descendants of these iconic indigenous food. Through the years, they've been hybridized with varieties from other regions in different parts of the world. And right here is a guide to what you'll find and how best to use the different varieties. So as you can see, um, the butternut says, easy to handle, sweet, and delicious with mushrooms. Now right here on my table, I have three different squashes. I have the butternut. I have an acorn squash and I also have a spaghetti squash. In the future, in some of our future classes, may be doing some recipes with some of these other squashes, but today we're going to do a recipe with our butternut squash. Today's recipe calls for fresh sage and fresh, fresh rosemary, so I'm going to go out into my garden and harvest some sage and rosemary. recipe today and I've already given thanks you know and asked for permission and left my offering put down some tobacco to offer this plant so that I can harvest some of some of this plant to make our meal we start with my rosemary. We don't need too much, so just gonna take what we need. Get to stand over here with my sage. Here I have the rest of my ingredients, which is my squash, my onion, my Swiss chard, my garlic, my fresh herbs, my fresh sage and rosemary, and just a little bit of my homemade seasoned salt, which, just, which is just a mix of some garlic, onion, um, and a red chili powder. We have just four tablespoons of sunflower oil, which we'll be using for our whole entire meal today. And we also have some roasted pinon and some cranberries, dried cranberries for garnish. Now that we have all of our ingredients gathered and ready, the first thing we are going to do is preheat our oven to 375 degrees. Next, we will peel and seed the squash and cut into large bite-sized chunks. Now I'm going to prepare my fresh herbs starting with my rosemary. I've rinsed my rosemary and I'm just going to de-stem the rosemary, taking off all the brittles off of the stem. And then I'm going to just take my knife and give the rosemary a nice mince and my rosemary is ready to go.
Next I'm going to do the same with my sage and I'm just going to start by destemming, taking all the leaves off of the stems and then I'm going to stack my leaves and take my knife and um, just give those a nice slice and my sage will be ready to go. I'm going to set my sage aside for later and continue on with my squash. We are going to coat our butternut squash with one tablespoon of our oil and one teaspoon of our homemade seasoned salt and our fresh rosemary. I'm going to get that nice and coated and nice and mixed up and then place that on a sheet pan and we're going to put that into our oven and roast that for 30 to about 45 minutes until tender and caramelized. About halfway through you can turn your squash and so once I have that ready to go I'm going to set that aside so I can prepare our next step. I'm going to start with preparing my onions and I'm just going to take the ends off of my onions and peel the skin off and then I'm going to quarter them. Next we're going to coat our onion and our garlic with a half teaspoon of our seasoned salt and another tablespoon of our oil and then we're going to place that onto another sheet pan and we're going to roast that for about 20 to 30 minutes turning halfway through. Now we're going to take a look at our two baking trays about halfway through. It's looking like it's starting to get nice and caramelized, which is what we want. Now here is a look at our final dishes out fresh out of the oven. Next we're going to start with preparing our chard and you don't need a knife for this part you can just use your hands and just using your hands you can just tear off the leaves off of the stem and we're going to do this to all of our chard separating the stem from the leaf. Next we are going to cut our stems into about one inch pieces and then we are just going to lightly slice our char, just giving it a quick cut. Next we are going to heat our pan and drizzle with our sunflower oil and then we're going to start with sauteing our stems, our charred stems. And we're going to let those saute for about up to three minutes and then we will add our charred leaves and our fresh sage we are now ready to add in our roasted vegetables so we're gonna add in our onion and garlic and our butternut squash and then we're going to go ahead and top that with our roasted pinon, our toasted pine nuts and our dried cranberries and we're just going to toss that over heat to incorporate all the ingredients for one more minute and then we can remove from the heat and as an optional ingredient, you can add in some crumbled goat cheese if you'd like. Your roasted butternut squash and Swiss chard is ready to go. Here's a look at our final dish. The roasted vegetables are nice and caramelized. They have a really great roasted flavor. The stems are nice and crunchy and the leaves are nice and soft. So it's a really great mix of texture and flavor. I decided to pair this dish with a wild rice. 
a wild rice mixed with veggies. So we're going to move on to uh, preparing our wild rice. We're starting with two cups of wild rice and eight cups of broth or water. And we're just going to bring those eight cups of broth or water to a boil and add in our rice. And then we're going to cover that and let it cook for about 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. Wild rice takes a lot longer to cook than regular rice and it also requires a lot more water. So as our rice is boiling, I'm going to prepare our veggies and I decided to use a mushroom and asparagus today. I feel like the mushroom is going to pair very well with the butternut squash and um, the asparagus just is going to give the wild rice a nice texture. And so I'm going to start with preparing my veggies and I'm just cutting my asparagus into about two inch chunks and then I'm just going to slice my mushrooms into nice slices. I'm going to chop some onion and garlic and a little bit of red bell pepper as well. Here's a look at all of my chopped veggies ready to go. So we're just going to check on our rice really quickly, see how that's going. Next, I'm going to heat up my pan and drizzle the last of my oil. And I'm going to add my veggies starting with my onion, garlic, and bell pepper. And I'm just going to let that cook for about a minute or two. Next, I'm going to add my asparagus, and I'm just going to mix that in and keep that cooking. Next, I'm going to add my mushrooms and mix those in. And I'm going to add some dried thyme to give it a nice flavor. And I'm just going to cook all of that together for about another two to three minutes and our veggies are good to go. So next we are going to check on our rice and see how our wild rice is doing. It looks like it is just about done and we are going to get ready to mix our veggies and wild rice together. I'm going to take two cups of my cooked wild rice and I'm gonna mix that in with my veggies. And I'm just going to mix that all together. I'm going to turn my heat back on one more time just to kind of get all of these flavors mixed together and any leftover juices evaporated. Here's a look at our final dish. And I served my plate with my two dishes. My roasted butternut and Swiss chard served with my wild rice and veggies. It has a lot of great flavor and a lot of great texture. And I just want to give a shout out to Agricultura Network and La Cosecha as these are all seasonal veggies from um, Agricultura Network which are grown locally and organically and um, the end of the season. So this season was coming to an end and I was super excited to use all of these freshly harvested seasonal veggies and I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. I hope that you can try this recipe at home with your families. Don't forget to give us a like on this video, 
comment below let us know what kind of recipes you would like to see in our next video we have some homework for you today which is to gather with your family either before or after your meal and to share these words with each other as you can see right here in this sheet it's a sheet where you fill in the blanks I would like for you to do this with your family. Each one of your family members can share their food story. I will share my food story with you. My name is Maya Well. I am the child of Elga and Jose from the land of Aslan. As a child, my parents fed me corn, beans, and veggies. When I had an upset stomach, my caretakers gave me manzanilla or charcoal ashes to make me feel better. The smell of tamales cooking brings me back to my home. The three ingredients that were in most of my meals growing up as a child were tortillas, rice, and beans. The first thing I learned to cook as a child was huevos a la mexicana. One dish that is very important to my home is pozole. A way to describe my connection to my culture through my food is my molcajete, which is my grinding stone. A dish that I would like to share with you all is chocolate tamales. I consider my diet to be balanced. And one thing I would like to change about my diet and health is removing sugar. A smell that describes me best is ajo y cebolla, which is garlic and onion. So this is just a quick way to think about our own food story and our own um, relation to food and family. Feel free to share your food stories by leaving us a comment on this video. If you missed our last two classes, you can still check those out right here on our channel. And don't forget to join us next week for our next Indigenous cooking class. Have a great weekend.